The purpose of this video is to relate our usual presentation of consumer surplus to the shift from one indifference curve to another resulting from a price increase. We'll work out the effects for a normal good considering both the compensating variation and equivalent variation. Here's the case for a normal good. Create your own diagram taking care to position the indifference curves to represent appropriate shifts. If price increases from P1 to P2, the budget line pivots in and the consumer moves from bundle A to bundle B. The shift from A to A prime is the substitution effect and that from A prime to B is the income effect. The change in income needed to return the consumer to U naught following the price increase is the compensating variation, a measure of the welfare loss to the consumer, that is, the lost consumer surplus. It is the amount of income the consumer needs to receive CV on the vertical axis to compensate her for the loss in utility from U0 to U1 resulting from the price increase. To derive the Marshallian and compensated demand curves, we draw the PQ diagram directly under the indifference curve diagram, taking care to make sure the x-axis is identical. P1 is the low price, remember, P2 is the high price. Use the dashed lines to plot the three points in PQ space corresponding to the three points in the indifference curve diagram shown above. So A is here, B is here, and A prime is here at P2. A and B lie on the Marshallian or standard demand curve X superscript M. And A and A prime lie on the compensated demand curve. The level of X the consumer would choose at each price if she were compensated with just enough income to maintain utility at U0, the level of satisfaction enjoyed at P1. The area to the left of the compensating demand between P1 and P2 equals the loss in consumer surplus from the price increase. The amount of income the consumer would need to receive to compensate her for the loss in utility from the higher price. This is the same as the CV we indicated earlier on the indifference curve diagram. Our usual measure of the change in consumer surplus, the area in brown to the left of the Marshallian demand curve between P1 and P2, understates the compensating variation loss in consumer surplus. The light green wedge captures the difference. To get the equivalent variation, we look at the gain in consumer surplus from avoiding the price increase. The shift from B to B prime measures the substitution effect of lowering price back down from P2 to P1, maintaining utility at the new lower level U1, and the resulting gain in effective income needed to complete the full adjustment back to A is the equivalent variation measured on the vertical axis as EV the maximum amount the consumer would be willing to pay to avoid the loss in utility resulting from the increase in price. Following the dashed lines down to the PQ diagram, we see B and B prime on the compensated demand curve corresponding to holding utility equal to U1. Easy to see that our usual measure of consumer surplus overstates the equivalent variation for a normal good, the area in blue.
The takeaway from all this is that, except where the income effect is zero, the compensating and equivalent variations give us two alternative and equally valid representations of the change in consumer surplus associated with a price increase. The impact of the price change starting from the original level of utility and the impact of reversing the price change from the perspective of the lower level of utility. Since the area under the Marshallian demand curve falls in between these measures, it seems reasonable to use this area as our standard measure of consumer surplus. Of course, in practice, we make one more approximation using the trapezoid P2BAP1 instead of the nonlinear integral between P2 and P1 under XM.